Hey everyone, Teresa Sigmund here, and you are in the right place to learn to design, choose, or make the dance and skate dress of your dreams. Now today I have with me one of my favorite local clients, Marlene, and she has been dancing for quite a long, how, how long have you been dancing? 20 years. 20 years. She is a beautiful performer. She has these amazing extensions and just a gorgeous smile on the floor, and it's always a real joy watching her. Now you're not going to believe this, but this dress is actually nine and a half years old. And I know this because that's the date on my measurement card <laughs> from when we did it. And it is in great condition. There are surprisingly very few rhinestones missing. And normally, you know, about a year or two ago, it would have started losing them. This is in great condition. The matte jersey, which is less stretchy than a kind of a Chris Ann dance crepe has held up beautifully. There aren't any snags anywhere. It looks great. We are going to do some updating on this today and I'm going to sort of walk you through the process. So I am going to, um, when I originally made this dress, it was stick straight skirts were in style. So we are going to add a little volume to the hem and what I've done on this left side is pinned a one inch or 13 millimeter horsehair or crinoline in, on this side. And then over here, I've got about a two inch, or gosh, I think that's about 40, 45 millimeters, horsehair pinned on that side, just so that Marlene could take a look and see which curve she likes. As far as how it's going to move, they will move the same, but when she's just standing there, they do have um, a slightly different curve, the smaller, Crenlin, the smaller horse hair, is going to give you a slightly gentler curve than the one that's on the right side. Marlene has chosen the one on the left. So which do you like? And this is a great way when you're trying to decide what you want in your hem to go ahead and, you know, just pin a little bit in, pin a quarter panel in and see what you like. Now this skirt, I'll have you turn sideways please, is really sleek on this side. Okay, now if you keep going, Go to the other side, right, keep going. Then on this one, we have this really feminine yet sexy sheer panel. Now underneath the rest of this skirt, there are two layers of chiffon, or there is a layer of Georgette, and then the matte jerseys on top of it. The chiffon slash Georgette underneath it is so that she doesn't catch her heel in the stretchy fabric. So that's something to keep in mind for your costumes. This panel, this embroidered mesh is so beautiful and it just flows magnificently with all these rhinestones and everything. So this only has one layer of fabric just so that we could maintain the sheer look. And she will not be getting the red crinoline in there. That just happened to be what I had around that was that width. Okay, so go ahead and you'll notice this nice curve here. So what's interesting about this dress is that it's a symmetrical, asymmetrical dress. Keep going. Now we are gonna do a couple of things to this dress. We've already played around with the hem, which you know. We have also toyed around with, well, let's add some sleeves for a different look. Cause she's worn this quite a lot of times over the last nine years. And we just want a different look. Her tastes have changed, her body has changed and her dance needs have changed. She's not competing anymore. She's doing, you know, fun shows locally and some really awesome routines with her husband. So, um, and then the other thing we're going to do is we're going to change the back some as well. Turn back towards, okay. Marlene has um, scoliosis that has shifted as she's aged and she's got just beautiful skin. So we don't really want to cover it up and make her seem matronly, but we are going to go in and camouflage the scoliosis curves here and the fact that the dress is a little snugger, more snug now than when I originally made it. Okay, keep going. So that's the changes that we're going to make. Skirt, sleeves, and rehab the back a little bit to create a completely different look. So Marlene and I are going to go work a little magic and we will see you in just a few moments. We're back and Marlene now has really gorgeous sleeves. Now the great thing about buying a little extra fabric when you make your dresses is that you have enough to make changes later on. 
Now what we've toyed around with, what we've decided on is kind of a three quarter length sleeve because that's what Marlene likes, but so that it doesn't look so, go ahead, drop your arms again, so that it doesn't look so utilitarian with the straight across look. I actually cut the sleeve so that it goes at an, a diagonal when her arms are down and then when her arms are up, oops, there we go, Let's shift that around, it hangs pretty straight. So that's a real, it changes the look depending on where her arms are. Now for right now, these sleeves are just pinned in underneath it. They're not stitched or anything. You're getting the entire view of the dress here. And the other two options that we haven't decided on yet is do we put a really simple scallop border on the sleeve? And this is just the scallop border that came with the lace. Or do we go in over here and add the same kind of border as is all the way around the edges? Now I do have enough lace to do both sleeves if we wanted to do that. The, the main consideration is, um, essentially one of the main considerations is cost because it will cost significantly more to rhinestone this entire border than it will to do just this, this little bit here. See how beautifully her arms move? Just imagine that on the competition floor. So when, you're, um, when you have the embroidered mesh, it has just a minimum amount of stones over here, whereas the border is really heavy. So as you're trying to decide which sleeve to choose for your dress, you wanna keep that in mind. So it's how much do you like it and is it worth the cost? Now, Marlene has not made a decision on that yet. So what we are going to, you can relax your arms. So what we're gonna wait and decide is what are we gonna to do to the back? And what, you know, after we change the back, then does that affect how the sleeves look? So by the next time she comes for a fitting, I will have these sleeves basted in here. They'll be ready to go. And then that way we can see the entire effect. Marlene and I are going to sign off and leave you with this, but I just wanted to let you see the alterations that are going on on this dress. And then, of course, in a different blog, you will see everything that we've done and I'll catch you up on that. In the meanwhile, if you have found value in this video, please tell all your dancing, skating, sewing friends, because you don't want to sew alone. And if you haven't gone to sewlikeapro.com, go ahead and do so. Leave your name and email address so you never miss one of these lovely design and sewing tips. And also, leave me a comment. Tell me what is your favorite change here? Do you like the scallop border on the sleeves or do you like the heavy lace border on the sleeves? And you know, just tell me what's your favorite thing. What would you do if this was your dress? So that's it. I will talk to you again soon. Thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> that's an awesome color on you. It really, really is. I love this color on you. When in doubt, magic marker the Nike on your yoga pants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, ma I magic marker a lot of, because I get fade marks on my, oh, on my scrub bottoms. So yes. I've got black and I've got royal blue. <laughs> but you have to be careful with some of the, uh, uh, the um, um, Sharpies have a red tone to them. So you have to be careful oh. with the Sharpies because they can show up a little red.